Let me give you a quick look on CrocoCrypt lib. It's a wrapper around the Java cryptography architecture. The idea is to provide an easy use of secure password hashing without bothering the Java crypto engine. What this basically means is that you don't need to generate any parameters, so for instance no salt, you don't need to do a security evaluation because secure defaults are being chosen and it's using a compact storage format. So if you think about how to store a salt to a password and let's say the hash algorithm or whatever, everything here is covered in one single format. So it simply is a wrapper around the processes and the procedures for the Java crypto engine you would have to perform on your own. And how does this look like in code? Well, as you can see, there is a demo password specified. Then there is the essential class called compact password hash. And you simply have to call the method generate hash with a secret class that basically includes the password. And that's about it. So now you have your secure hash that includes all parameters, the algorithm, the salt, the iteration count, etc. In this case, in this example, it writes the raw bytes to a database. And the next step is to load this hash from the database again and to verify using this class against the newly provided password. And that's about it. So you see, it's very, very easy to use. You don't need to take care about anything. So if you think the procedures of the Java crypto engine are too complicated or you don't want to take care of this, you can use such a wrapper library. In this case, you can, of course, also change the default. So let's say the iteration count, the salt length, or if you want to have a certain algorithm that is possible. So let's run this simple example. And as you can see, it's a unlicensed trial and you see the output of the hash, meaning the whole compact format with all parameters that would be stored in a database, for instance. And we see one true and one false value here. It comes from this output. So the verification against the original password is of course successful and the verification against a wrong password is not.